What's good YouTube? It's 2025 and I'm going to show you guys how to properly overclock your PlayStation 4 or your PlayStation 5 controller. What is overclocking? Overclocking is not what you think. A lot of people think that you're going into your BIOS and tweaking numbers. It's really just you downloading a zip file. That zip file basically puts a filter over your USB port. It helps read your controller. You can literally change your input latency to one millisecond, 1000 hertz. Um, basically, you're gonna be able to get faster input. So every time you're clicking your controller, shooting, moving, everything's just gonna feel more fluid to the touch. Um, a lot of the competitive COD players, Warzone pros, Apex players, they all overclock their controllers. It's no secret being on PC. In this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to properly overclock your controller. Okay, so the first step I want you guys to do is you're gonna want to actually go into your search bar and you're gonna want to write just you're gonna want to type in system information. Mine's already at the top. Um, basically, we're gonna look at your secure boot state. Your secure boot state has to be off in order for it to work. If it's on, unfortunately, you're gonna have to go into your BIOS and turn off your secure boot. When your secure boot is on, it won't let the program run specifically. So I just wanted you guys to look at this. If you guys don't know if your secure boot is on or off, you can literally go into your search bar and just search up system information and it'll, it'll tell you. I'll also have linked in my bio. Um, there is a video that I followed on my first PC. Um, I wasn't comfortable going into my BIOS at the time. I was such a noob. I bought a pre-build. I didn't know exactly how to... I didn't feel comfortable with going into my BIOS. And if you don't feel comfortable with going into your BIOS, I have a workaround. Um, I'll also have that linked in my bio, what video you can follow. I actually followed it. I had my secure boot on. Every time I would run the overclock software, the Battle Beaver overclock software, it would basically, it would it give me this error message. And if you click yes and you try to run it, your USB port will go like blank. You'll get like a weird red blank reading, which it'll all make sense once we have the program downloaded. But this is the first step that I want you guys to do if you guys don't know if your secure boot is on and off. Again, I'll have LinkedIn bio. If this is on and you don't feel comfortable with going into your BIOS, I'll have another video that you guys can follow that will show you how to work around this. Um, like if you're a Valorant player, you have to have secure boot on. So this also works for people that want to play COD. The Valorant players that want to play COD, they do the same method. I'll have that LinkedIn bio for you guys, I promise. All right, so we're going to want to go to Google. Battle Beaver actually made it way simpler. They like literally have the overclock software on their website. Um, Back when I first overclocked my controller, it'd make you go to like Lord of Zip or Lord of Mice or something like that. Website looks super sketchy, but it's it's legit. Battle Beaver, they just made it simpler. You can literally go to their website, type in Battle Beaver overclock. It's already searched. Click it. I'll also have this linked in my bio for you. So after you guys are done with the video you guys can literally just click the link and start overclocking your controller um you're gonna hit download you're gonna try to install it it's gonna pop up right here and say download while this is downloading i want you guys to make sure to go into your search bar look up core isolation and you're gonna want to turn memory integrity off um if your secure boot is off and you still get that weird little red error message this is what's gonna pretty much cause the problem of you not being able to overclock the controller. So if your secure boot's off, just double check. You can literally search it, type in core isolation, go to memory integrity and make sure this is off. You have this off, you're golden. Okay. So once it's downloaded, you can go into your folders. It's gonna be under your downloads, right? It should be at the top. I already had mine downloaded. So mine's gonna be right here. It's gonna be labeled as hid USB zip. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to extract it. What I did was I extracted it to my desktop to make it easier for me to gain access to it just in, just in case I need to check my controller. Sometimes Windows updates resets your overclock on the controller. It doesn't do it all the time, but randomly it's happened to me a couple of times where I've had Windows update and I had my, my uh, what's it called? My filter was turned off. Once you have it downloaded and you have it onto your desktop. I, I personally do it on desktop. I've seen people do it on their downloads, but I like to keep it on my desktop. It's right here. You're gonna wanna click it. Okay, you're gonna wanna go to driver. And then you're gonna wanna scroll down to setup, X, uh, setup X, exe. What I do is I right click it and I run an administrator. It's gonna ask you, it's gonna give you like this weird little error message, just run it. Okay, so this is everything that's here. You can also put all. 
I'm gonna plug in my PlayStation 4 controller. So see, we got my PS4. We're gonna plug it in, right? Okay, plugged in. Once it's plugged in, you're gonna see where it says wireless controller. It's gonna say the same thing for your PlayStation 5 controller. Um, you can see right here the bit interval is at five. So this is stock. When you plug in your PlayStation 5 controller, it's gonna read at six. So technically, off rip, if you don't overclock your controller, technically PlayStation 4 is the fastest. Also, if you're using an Xbox controller, I highly recommend you not overclock your controller. It said that it the overclock software kind of ruins the controller. You actually get more of a like input latency. So unfortunately, you can't overclock Xbox controllers. I don't recommend it. Um, it's just for PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5. So as you can see here, you can see my controller right here. It's wireless. You're going to want to highlight this, right? Now, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to install service. First time, you're gonna hit run, open, it's okay. You're gonna go to your default. You're gonna wanna put this at 1000, this is the magic sauce right here. You're gonna hit 1000, install service, run, open. And then last step, you're gonna wanna put filter on device, install service, run, open. And what you do is you unplug your controller. Okay, and I'm gonna make this easier so you can see everything. I want you to put with hid USBF, okay? Once you plug your controller back in, you're gonna, it's gonna read yes, your rate 1000, and then your bit interval is one. This means your controller is properly overclocked. If you get that error message, make sure to follow these steps. Again, if you have your secure boot on and you don't feel comfortable with going into your BIOS, I'll have the workaround linked in, bi linked in bio. It's the video that I followed when I couldn't get it to work the first time on my first PC rig. So I'll have that also linked in bio. But um, yeah, that's how you properly overclock your controller. Um, let me know in the comments below what you guys think. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. I'll try to get back to you guys and help you guys out. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to drop a like. If you guys are new to the channel, don't forget to hit a subscribe. We're on the road to 5K subs on YouTube. Till the next YT video, guys. Peace.